What is the best rate of withdrawal in retirement? This is a very common question, particularly for those of you trying to figure out how much you need to save to sustain your retirement. So before we answer that question, we're gonna talk a little bit about what is rate of withdrawal and some common figures and some factors that go into the rate of withdrawal calculation so you have a better idea of what might work for you. So the first question is, what is meant by the term rate of withdrawal? So put simply, all it means is the percentage of the asset that someone in retirement is withdrawing to sustain their lifestyle. So let's use some real numbers because I think that that makes it a lot easier to understand. Let's say, for example, someone has $500,000 in an IRA that he is going to withdraw from in retirement in 2024. So he withdraws $25,000 to help sustain his lifestyle. Well, $25,000 is 5% of $500,000, and thus his withdrawal rate is 5%. So his rate of withdrawal in 2024 would be 5%. So that is what people mean when they refer to rate of withdrawal. Now, why does it even matter? Well, it matters because the goal is that you're going to save enough money that you can withdraw small percentages every single year but never run out. So the lower the withdrawal rate, the less likely you'll run out of money. But the higher the withdrawal rate, the more likely you'll run out of money. So it's really important to plan on a number of factors before you determine how much you should be withdrawing each year. So we're gonna talk about that in this video. First, let's talk about some rates of withdrawal, rule of thumbs that are out there in the marketplace so you can understand what maybe you've heard and what context that is in. So the first I'll start with is the 4% withdrawal rate. This rule of thumb says, you should withdraw 4% of your investment portfolio towards retirement every single year, and that is likely to sustain your retirement for 30 years or more. This rule came about in the 1990s, and it was a big study that was done, and it did look pretty adequate that if you were to withdraw 4% in a portfolio, and we'll talk about some of the qualifiers, your money would be unlikely to run out during retirement. So in our last example, we talked about someone with a $500,000 portfolio. So applying the 4% rule would mean he would withdraw $20,000 each year from his portfolio to sustain his lifestyle because $20,000 is 4% of that portfolio. Another rule of thumb is just like the 4% rule, the 5% rule. And this one, pretty self-explanatory. It just ticks up that withdrawal rate from 4% to 5%. This rule kind of turned, came about because 4% is such a low number and it was really hard for retirees to sustain their expenses in retirement unless they had a large portfolio. So that is why 5% seems to be more adequate. Also, investment returns over the historical periods have indicated that 5% is probably safe depending on how you invest. So make sure you stay through this entire video because I'm going to talk about the different factors that go into determining what rule would work for your overall portfolio, and they are gonna vary. So depending on different things that happen to you in retirement and how you invest your monies, a different rule might apply. Generally though, if you are working with a financial planner or seeking pl financial advice, you're gonna hear somewhere between four and 5% is generally a safe number to withdraw from your retirement assets, assuming they are invested in at least a moderate portfolio in the equities marketplace. Before I move on to the different factors that you need to be aware of before you pick a withdrawal rate that you think will apply in your retirement, let's talk about Dave Ramsey for a second. So he recently got into a little bit of hot water for recommending an 8% withdrawal rate. That's right, 8%. Now, how Dave Ramsey got to that 8% is he assumed investment returns during retirement at 12%. I'm going to talk about investment returns and what's likely in the coming minutes, but bottom line, 8% is very aggressive. And while I think Dave Ramsey has some great advice on a lot of things, this is something I would discard and really think seriously about lowering it below 8%. So just a quick note, he does have great advice, but this might be one to pass on. Now let's talk about the five factors that will really impact what a safe withdrawal rate for your situation might look like. And I encourage you to think about these five factors and then determine what might work for you. The five factors are life expectancy, expected investment returns, inflation rate, other sources of income you will have in retirement, and unexpected large expenses like medical that you might wanna plan for ahead of time. I'm gonna break down each one of these factors and talk about how it might impact your withdrawal rate projections and hopefully give you some ideas of how you can factor it into when 
you are ready for retirement and how you may want to determine what is safe to take out of your investments. Factor number one is life expectancy. So how does this impact things? Well, the longer that you live in retirement, the longer your assets will need to last, meaning you will not want to withdraw as much each year because you need them to keep lasting while you're alive. So if you have a very long life expectancy, maybe family life expectancy, or you're just very healthy, or you feel like you're going to live a long time, which I hope you all do, then you're going to want to be a little bit on the lower end of withdrawal rate planning. If, however, you have a short life expectancy or are diagnosed with something that maybe shortens your life expectancy, then you can probably withdraw more from your assets. Now, here's the thing. I really don't want you to plan to have a short life expectancy. We certainly don't know how long we're on this planet for, but I like to tell clients that you don't want to plan to die. That is not a financial plan. So generally, at least plan for your assets to last until age 85 or 90. And if you do have longevity in your family, go to 95 or 100. Don't be depressing and plan for a short life expectancy so you can withdraw from your assets. That's that's not great. I would not recommend doing that. The next factor that is going to play a significant role in the success of your withdrawal rate is your expected investment returns. Now, investment returns are going to depend entirely on how your portfolio is allocated. So I'm going to give you some general investment returns that we see, but you need to go to your portfolio and you need to understand how you're invested and if the investment returns that are expected that I talk about are applicable to you. So please, please, please do that because again, it's really going to dictate what is safe to assume you're going to earn. So generally, the more equities you have, the more aggressive it is, and the better your returns will be over time. If you are in something like a 100% equities portfolio, so broadly diversified through the US marketplace and some abroad, you could safely project a 7 to 8% return rate over a long period of time. Of course, remember, this is all average. This is not every year guaranteed. It's over a long period of time. If, however, you have, like most retirees, likely a more moderate portfolio where you're not 100% equities, but you have maybe 60 to 70% in equities, well, you could safely project a 5 to 6% rate of return. So I say all of this to say the most important thing you can do is understand how you're invested, how that looks like it's going to play out in the coming years, and if that's how you're going to continue to be invested in retirement. So you can anticipate what kind of returns you should be expecting. Investment returns on a final note. This is actually where Dave Ramsey got into the hot water. He assumed a 12% investment return rate on the portfolio that he recommended an 8% withdrawal rate from. So that's very high. It is not impossible to receive an average of 12% in particular indexes in the equities market, and so a lot of people actually feel comfortable with this recommendation he made. However, I'm here to tell you as an investment advisor and a financial planner, I simply would not feel comfortable assuming you're going to get a 12% on average rate of return no matter how you're invested. It's much better to assume a lower, more conservative rate, and then if something better happens, great, but you've planned for something that's not going to be hitting it out of the park every single year. So that's my take on why Dave Ramsey went wrong and why his 8% withdrawal rate is so different than the 4 to 5 that we started talking about. The next factor that you need to consider is inflation and what it's going to do to your lifestyle expenses when it comes to retirement. You're going to have to plan for a withdrawal rate that will sustain your lifestyle, but you need to also make sure that you understand your lifestyle between now and into retirement is going to go up a little bit each year. The question is by how much? Now first, let me paint that picture for you in case you don't already know what inflation does because I'm sure if you are living in the US, you know over the last few years what inflation feels like. So if your lifestyle expenses cost $50,000 a year and they were inflated by 3% a year over a 30 year period, they would then be $121,000 a year. So it's really important to factor in an inflationary rate to your lifestyle so that way you know how much you're going to have to withdraw in the future to sustain it. So inflationary rate numbers can vary. I recommend for now using a 3% rate and then waiting to see how inflation goes in the coming decades. It's always adjustable, but for now 3% is probably a good place to start. 
Another factor to make sure you consider is to think about any other sources of income that will come into your household in retirement. The good news is any other sources of income will only help reduce how much you need to withdraw from your assets to sustain your lifestyle. So other sources of income that are very common are social security, pensions, rental income. So really anything outside of your savings and investments that you can use to pay for your lifestyle is going to reduce how much you need to withdraw from your investments. So this one is a good thing. And part of your financial plan might be to build other sources of income outside of just your general retirement accounts. The final factor is planning for the unexpected. And a lot of times this really just encompasses thinking about large medical expenses or long-term care needs that might come up in retirement or possibly other emergencies. The problem with planning for this is that it's also unknown. So here's what I recommend. Once you've put together your financial plan and you've factored in these other pieces when it comes to planning your safe withdrawal rate, then you can do some stress testing. And stress testing might look different for everyone, but put in some large unexpected withdrawal numbers every decade or so and see how things look in the long term. Can your plan sustain a $20,000 excess withdrawal every five to 10 years? Years. That's just a hypothetical, but just to get you thinking what might be realistic for your needs. Now, if you're really serious about stress testing, that is something a certified financial planner can really help you with and something that we do with all of our plans at my company. So if it is something you're worried about and you want a professional to talk to you about stress testing, long-term care medical expenses, that's something you may want to get some extra assistance with. Otherwise, just start with putting in some extra costs and see how things look in the long term. So you've made it through this whole video and you're probably wondering when is she going to tell us what the best rate of withdrawal in retirement is? Well, I hope that you now understand that my answer is going to be a lawyer answer. It's going to be, it depends. And it depends on all the factors I just went through along with some other factors about your choice and lifestyle, etc. But you probably want just an answer. So if you are planning for retirement, I always recommend a safe withdrawal rate to start with is somewhere between four and 5%. If you can save enough assets for retirement that you can plan to only withdraw 5% or less to sustain your lifestyle, you're on track. And of course, as you get closer to retirement and through retirement, you can always reevaluate based on what's actually happening. So on that note, if you do need help with anything like withdrawal rate planning, retirement planning, or really any kind of financial planning, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or my company. My company, Chisholm Financial Planning and Investments, offers comprehensive online financial planning services, and we work with people of all various ages all over the country who want comprehensive financial planning. I hope you found this interesting and entertaining, and please like, share, subscribe. If you did enjoy our content, it really helps our channel. In the meantime, I wish you many happy market returns.